The Ivy and Felix Show, Puppet Friends Chat About New Picture Books, Episode 2. Felix, I made it. I made it to the show on time. Aren't you proud of me? I'm ready to share some great books with our friends. Yes, you've done quite well, dearest Ivy. Punctuality is a virtue. And I do appreciate you not keeping me waiting this time. I was so excited for our second show. I set my alarm to give me a reminder of what time to show up. Good thinking. It's quite nice to see you growing into a mature and dependable person. I am trying, but sometimes it's hard to be a kid. That it is, love. The good news is, a kind, caring adult can help you navigate what's your best course of action and help you deal with those pesky emotions in a positive way. And I have just the chappy who can assist us. He's helped thousands of kids with his friendly neighborhood and thoughtful words. Oh yeah, you're talking about the life story of Mr. Rogers. Spot on, Ivy. I bet many of you out there already know that a book written about someone's life is called a biography. Huh? Did you sneeze? Oh, Ivy, Ivy, Ivy. A biography is a type of book, and I understand it's a bit of a big word for some people. Okay, super. Can I introduce the book now? Can I? Brilliant. Carry on. Our first book is a biography, and it's called Hello Neighbor, The Kind and Caring World of Mr. Rogers by Matthew Cordell. Mr. Rogers had a great life. He had many fine interests like playing music on the piano, but his greatest joy was helping others, especially children. In this book, the author shares with us one of Mr. Rogers' best ideas, and I quote, the greatest gift you can give is your honest self. That makes sense. It also said he had some rough times too. I always try to be myself, Felix, but after reading this, I can see some kids have a hard time with that. You know what I like, Felix? What's that, Ivy? He liked to use puppets in his TV show. I'm going to be a famous puppet on a show like his one day. <laughs> Maybe. You could even call it, and I clearly am just making a suggestion, the Felix and Ivy show. But only if you want it. Wink, wink. Moving along to our second book. So now we've arrived at the Society of Distinguished Lemmings. Julie Colombe has written this delightful tome for all of us. Wow, Felix. These lemmings sure like to get dressed up. Nice. And all those rules. They remind me a little of you. Oh, dear. You have to stop. You're starting to embarrass me. <laughs> Truthfully, though, I can relate to craving a bit of order in this universe. And their fashion sense is just sublime. Hey, I see there's a brown bear in this tale. That bear is really big. His nose is the size of a whole lemming. Do you think he'll be a friend? Or just eat them up? Hmm, you do pose a very good question, Ivy. And after examining this story fully, I'm convinced this bear is capable of being a good friend to the lemmings, though they are quite different creatures. But I would love to hear what you lot think. Sure, but I hope you're right. And yeah, I don't think it would be that fun if we were all exactly the same. Very excited to share this next story with you. It's a factual tale, which means it's true. We get to meet a girl who likes bugs, even when she was small. It's entitled The Bug Girl, and it's written by the bug girl herself, Sophia Spencer. I'm kind of interested in bugs. I mean, the pretty ones, like ladybugs and butterflies. Spiders and roaches kind of freak me out. Ew! Well, Ivy, most people probably feel that way. And while I'll admit an insect creeping around on me in my sleep gives me a bit of the collywobbles, I do see a certain elegance in their design. Thanks to Sophia, we're introduced to many such insects, ones we may have never met before, such as dragonflies, stink bugs, and grasshoppers. The beautiful drawings do make them look nicer, but she says stink bugs actually stink. Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound so good. 
Did you know that Sophia grew up and became an entomologist? Or bug scientist? Now that's pretty cool. I like the idea of girls becoming scientists. Hey, wait a minute. Is this book a biography too? <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> There's certainly loads to love about this book. I really learned to respect all living things from Sophia. But what really made me fall in love with her was that she was not scared to be herself. And even though some people thought she was odd for loving her bugs, she kept right on doing it. Our old mate Mr. Rogers would have loved that. Guess what, Felix? Our next book is also a true story. It's called Claude, the true story of a white alligator. Oh yes, I love this one. Again, we see a character longing to be appreciated and the illustrations are just divine. Also, it's a true story of an unlikely friendship. Kind of like us, right? <laughs> That's right, Ivy. We can be quite different at times, but that way we can learn from one another. It says in here that it's unusual to find a white alligator. Quite rare, actually. And it's difficult being different. Yeah, most alligators are a boring kind of green, but Claude kind of glows in the dark. In the part where he finally meets his new friends in California, it says, Claude was still different. Very different. But it also says, but in this swamp, different was wonderful. Oh yes, I remember that bit very well. Perhaps I'd deny it, but a tear may have fallen from my eye as I read it. Oh, look away, friends, look away. <laughs> You're so silly, Felix. Maybe everyone will cry happy tears when they find out who Claude's unlikely friends are. You'll all just have to check out the book yourselves to find out. Oh, you're a very sneaky little girl. I kind of like it. Leave them in suspense. Keep the audience wanting more and all that. We do actually have one last book to share with you boys and girls. It's called How to Find a Bird. The curious Jennifer Ward wrote this one. Wow, we've had books about bugs, white crocodiles, lemmings, bears, and, and now, now birds. birds. I'm sensing a theme here. Perhaps, but we mustn't forget that dear Mr. Rogers, of course, most of our books this time have had animal themes. What I find fascinating is that most are real. This amazing picture book features many different species of beautiful birds, and how best to spot them. I like bird watching. They're not as icky as some bugs. Do you think this book will give me tips on how to find a bird without scaring it away? Look, 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 there's one. Here, little birdie, here, little guy. Oh, Ivy, no. I think you've given the poor thing a heart attack. <laughs> but I'm bird watching. I think you misunderstood when the book said to be quiet and blend in. I quote this as well. So quiet you can hear your heart beat. Oh, right. I just got a little excited. I'll be quieter now and maybe he'll come back. And, and that's, that's all, all for, for now. now. From me, Felix. And me, Ivy. Thanks for joining us. You can check out these books and even more new picture books at your local Clearwater Public Library. Or go online and request them with your library card number. Till, Till next time. time! Cool! I guess the book was right. Bye-bye, kids! And bye-bye, Birdie!